I'm Jim Rimbach, president of CX Global Media and host of the Customer Service Weekly podcast powered by Pace, the official podcast of National Customer Service Week, where our purpose is to help you ignite CX celebration all year. Each episode, I meet with senior leaders from top brands as they share their story on how they recognize and lead the people and solutions that help their organizations to deliver a customer experience that separates their organization from others so you can ignite your own CX celebration. And now, on to the show. Okay, CX Igniters, uh, welcome to the Customer Service Weekly podcast, which is the official podcast of National Customer Service Week. I'm excited today to have on our show Philip Benefit Bennett, who I actually met several years ago when he was the executive vice president of Options Express and had the opportunity to tour their call center in El Paso, Texas. And I've known of him for quite a while um, and just reconnecting with Phil and getting a, a really a good opportunity to do that on this particular show because he's going to share with us uh, what they are doing at Empire today because now he is running the customer service operations for them. And for me, growing up in the Chicago land area, I absolutely know who Empire is. And their jingle still rings in my head. And I know the old number that they used to have as part of the jingle. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, Phil is actually running their customer service operation and has some specific goals around MPS and things like that that I think they all focus on uh, all year long to be able to really make that customer experience celebration last, not just for the first full week in October when we have customer service, we can recognize it, but do it all year long. So as again, this is the official podcast for National Customer Service Week. So, you know, please go to customerserviceweekly.org and make sure that you become part of this ongoing celebration and sharing of insight on how we do that. Uh, and rate and review this podcast because you're going to get some good information. So again, Phil Bennett from, or Philip Bennett from, uh, Empire Today. Uh, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. I really do appreciate it. Well, and if you could, uh, you know, I've given a little bit of intro, but if you could give us a little bit of background about your work and your career, uh, and and just so that we can get to know you a little bit better. Sure. Well, you know, it's funny. I've been in sales all my life, and I learned to differentiate myself from the competition uh, through customer service. Anybody can sell price. And the problem with doing that is if I cut him, come in and cut your price, there's somebody who's going to come in and cut my price. So what I decided to do was instead of doing that, I would become indispensable to my customers, always available, always ready to bring them product whenever they needed it, and always uh, ready to deliver. I may cost a little bit more, but I had it, I was there, and I was available to them. And so really it was customer service that drove the sales that I was doing. And, and by, you know, I was the guy on the Friday before 4th of July, I'm calling my customers asking if they need anything, you know, that sort of type of thing. I carried stock with me so that, you know, if my customers were out, they would page me because that was before cell phones, but they could reach me and I would get product to them because if they're out of product, they're out of business and I can't let that happen. And so while other guys might be cheaper, they weren't available. I was available. And so that really made the difference. I accidentally got into the call center business. I joined the company Options Express. I started in their chat department. We ended up building a chat center for them. Um, and then, you know, initially we weren't going to take any phone calls from our customers. We're all going to do it chat, all going to do it digitally. We're an online company. Yeah, customers don't, you know, customers do what they want to do. And, and really the key to good service is to be available to the customer where they want you to be available. So, you know, I can tell them they have to call this 800 number. I can tell them they have to use chat, but if they want to do something different and I'm not there, I'm not available for them and they may go elsewhere. And so, you know, back in that, in those days you had phones uh, you had chat and you had email and that was pretty much it. I mean, social media was just starting, but nobody could really figure out how you could use it for service. We could market with it, but we couldn't use it for service. So we started with chat and then what happened was people kept calling. And so then they would say, hey, you know, our phones are really ringing off the hook. Can you throw somebody on the phones? Sure. All of a sudden now we are a multi-channel call center in a time when Nobody really knew what that meant or what it was. And so it was a very, very fascinating experience. We were very successful in the digital channels. We probably did 
um, half of our contacts in the contact center via chat, and then half were phone calls. Um, and then there was a small percentage of emails. Emails were always very important, but the nice thing is you can do those while you're doing chat. And so, you know, the, the chat really took the pressure off of the phone lines because you can get very detail oriented in chat and, you know, take your time and explain things. You don't have average handle time questions about chat because you really don't need to worry about it as long as your agents are capable of excelling. And so when, Charles Schwab bought us in 2011, <clears throat> and they're a great, wonderful company. I love them to death. Um, they just didn't fit with me. They were very, very bureaucratic. They, they had 13,000 people working for them at the time. We had 350 people. I mean, we could say, hey, let's do this. And three weeks later, we were doing it. Schwab, not so much. And, and so, you know, it was our 50-seat call center that you came and visited. Their smallest call center had 2,100 seats. There was no way that they were going to, you know, keep this 50-seat call center, although they liked what we were doing with chat. They thought it was very unique. Um, but it just didn't fit in their business model. And so, you know, I went separate ways after about a year with them and eventually ended up at a company called Insurion. Uh, they're an option, uh, they're a brokerage for insurance and they did micro business insurance. So business that the insurance companies wanted, but they didn't want to deal with the little customers because, you know, they're only making a couple hundred bucks off of each, you know, policy. And so Insurion stepped in and you know, they came to me, a friend of mine was working there and, and they had brought on a new client and they were struggling with call flow. And they, they said, you know, he said, would you come and interview for the position? I said, sure, because I was unhappy as a financial advisor. That was not the same as options trading. Options trading is very exciting. Financial advice, eh, not so much. Um, and I really wanted, I missed the call center. I found out I really loved the call center. And so I went up there and turned out they needed a little bit more than just a guy to come in and run their call center operation because we ended up uh, migrating them to the cloud, uh, bringing in uh, cloud uh, uh, contact center software, you know, moving their entire phone system to Ring Central, it was it was quite the process, and uh, I enjoyed it immensely. The only thing I didn't enjoy was I was living in El Paso, commuting to Chicago on Monday, coming back to El Paso on Friday, and so uh, you know, I'm living in an apartment up there. My kids are growing up without me, and eventually, I knew that that had to end, and and so we we parted company about a year and a half later. And at the time, I had a friend who was working for Empire. She had been our uh, chief counsel at Options Express. She was the chief counsel at Empire. And I saw that there was an opening for inside sales. And so I applied for it. And, um, you know, she said, it's not quite what you're used to. And I said, yeah, but it keeps me in El Paso. So, you know, it keeps me with my family because the call center for Empire is here in El Paso. When I interviewed with the call center director, she said, I told her my background and she said, I've got a better use for you. Um, let me get you in. She brought me in. Basically what I do is it's, it's kind of, to me, it's really cool because what I do is I evaluate vendors. I evaluate um, software. I evaluate hardware, how it would fit inside the call center, how it would improve the customer journey, how it improves the agent experience. And then when we find a good one, I go ahead and, and then implement it. So it's kind of a jack of all trades things. It's, it's not really, there's no job description for what I do. It, it, we kind of created it. But it's, you know, when I got there, our, our phone system, we were using Cisco. It was about 10 years old. It was out of date, approaching end of life. Um, we didn't have things like skills-based routing. We were faking it. Um, and they were brilliant in the way that they did it. I mean, you know, but, but the problem was you didn't have all of the modern conveniences. And so, you know, that's allowed me, we brought in great software, we brought in stuff, and it allowed us to position ourselves so that we could be resilient and really survive these sort of things. So my goal is to to improve the experience for all of my customers, both internal and external. And by 
external that's obviously the customer that's calling me but internal i have customers as well it's my agents it's my, uh, the the executives in chicago it's all the people that get data and information out of the call center i want to make that a better experience for everybody well and even what you're talking about right there i think it's critically important when we start talking about you know celebrating you know, customer service week and mm -hmm. having that spirit, you know, carried throughout the year and making an impact. And that comes from, you know, it's, it's the people side of it. It's the technology side of it. You know, it's the customer side of it. All of those are included. And that's why we focus in on those. Um, so I would like to though, get down to the specific celebration when you start talking Absolutely. about how uh, you've celebrated it in the past and then what you guys are planning to do this year, because you and I talked before we started uh, the interview and you said how when all this COVID stuff hit, you were able to send all of your agents home and be up and running, you know, minus of some minor hiccups yeah. that we have to deal with when that happens. But the major move, you did in 48 hours. Crazy. Yes. Crazy. So yeah, tell it, a bit about how you celebrated and what you're going to celebrate and uh, that quick transition. So... In the past for customer service week, we would do, you know, things like t-shirts. Always we would do, you know, luncheons or some sort of potluck or something like that. And, you know, we had put, we had put together things that was more than just customer service week. And, and I know we're focusing on that, but the problem is that's only one week a year. And Turnover being what it is in the call center, you have to engage the agents as much as you possibly can. And so each one of us who were in the senior management of the call center, we would take a couple of months and we would plan out things for the agents to do. And so it would be, oh, we would have maybe a potluck dinner. Uh, we brought in a cotton candy machine and I, I spun cotton candy all day long for people. Now, I've never done that before and I probably wasn't very good at it. But you know what? We had fun doing it. I got coated in, in spun sugar, and, and but it was a great thing. And, you know, we would do um, games and, and have prizes and, and um, uh, trivia challenges, things like that. And, you know, generally speaking, we're not giving away a lot of money here. What we're usually doing is we'll take off an occurrence. So, you know, you, you, get a, you get a nick for being late one day, and so you get an occurrence. But, hey, if you win this contest, you know, we'll take off a full occurrence. And, you know, you, so, so the agents would use it because it gave them a little bit of a cushion, and, and everybody had fun doing it. But they, it was more about having the fun. And, you know, one of the things when I was with the startup, and as you probably know, startups do weird things. I bought, for Halloween one year, I bought a full-on Darth Vader costume. It's the, the real full-on Darth Vader costume. Great, great costume. Everybody in the call center loved Star Wars. You know, all these new movies were coming out pull out the calls, pull out the Darth Vader costume, went around uh, giving out candy and stuff like that uh, on call center week as Darth Vader. Um, you know, and, and everybody thought it was really cool. And in the first time they did it, they didn't know who it was after that they did, but you know, the first time it was, it was really cool because nobody knew who Darth Vader actually was. Um, but you know, we, we do things like that to, to engage them, to keep them, you know, doing fun things because, and I mean, you know, you have to encourage the agents as well. And so, you know, coming up for this year, um, you know, I just talked to uh, the call center director because when we went home, we stopped doing all that stuff. You know, there was no, uh, we did the Super Bowl stuff, but it all ended. You know, we didn't have Easter. We didn't have April Fool's Day. We didn't have May the 4th this year. Um, and, I, and I said to Tracy, I said, you know, we really can do all that virtually. So she's having me get the uh, managers back together. We're going to each pull a month. We're all going to start doing the same thing. But for call center week, I have a sneaking hunch that what we'll probably do is something like a DoorDash type deal. So, you know, most of our agents are, are able to order DoorDash. So we'll send you out a DoorDash uh, card. If you want to get DoorDash and bring it in for lunch, we'll have a lunch. It, it, you can't do the potlucks that we used to do. And those are really missed. But, you, you know, it's, it's inexpensive to throw a pizza party in a call center. It's not 
inexpensive to send everybody a pizza. So you have to kind of, you know, pick and choose. And, and so I really think that's how we'll, we'll approach uh, customer service week this year. We'll have some games, we'll have trivia, we're going to have, because those can all be done virtually. And, you know, maybe something like a virtual scavenger hunt, uh, which we've done uh, frequently. It's great because we tie in our FAQs for that, find this, find that. And the agents learn to find all these things. And it's very helpful. So, you know, I, I can see us doing that and then culminating it with some sort of virtual online party that everybody can celebrate the fact that we've made it this far. I mean, you know, yeah, we got them home in 48 hours, but everybody had to deal with the whole new reality of, you know, what happens if your mic's not working? Because in the old days, they'd say, I can you guys come out and fix this? I'll go get coffee while you're doing it. Now, I can't go over and fix that. They have to do it themselves. And so it's, it's a bigger challenge than it was before. So we've got to celebrate just a little bit more. But I want to keep it going through the year. I want to keep the, the engagement, the trivia contests, all those things. We can go back to theming them um, by the month. It'll just be done virtually rather than in-house. Well, and as you're talking, I mean, for me, I think, you know, there's always bright side, you know, to, to yeah. that are, you know, have the dark uh, appearance. And, you know, even though all of us, like you said, get forced to go home 48 hours, and we have to be operational. And now, Mike, now you have to, sorry, you have to tech support and repair yourself. And I mean, there's, you know, there is the bright side and that we now get to really look at making this celebration a year round impact and celebrating, creating and igniting a CX celebration at all times. However, <laughs> There's things in your past where you're like, eh, I'm not going to do that again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure there are. I mean, we, we certainly aren't going to be sending everybody T-shirts. I mean, you know, that sort of thing. It, 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 things are now changing. And, and the best part of this is I really believe, I don't believe we are ever going to go back to where we were before. We had played around with at-home agents, but we're not going back to the call center the way it was. We will probably never have 250, 300 people in a 20,000 square foot building ever again because it presents a vulnerability that we now don't have and we've now learned. So, you know, the thing is, you've got to be careful. You don't want to necessarily call out one person so that other people feel that they're not being recognized. You want to make sure that everybody gets recognized and it's more than just you know a, a t-shirt that says you know call center uh or customer service week or something like that because you'll wear it but you know it's gonna have to be much more vivid i think and while food may not sound vivid call centers run on their stomachs <laughs> Yeah, I, that, I mean, that, that is, there's something about that whole community effect. And for me, even when I start thinking about, you know, my operations days, I mean, that was some of the best times is when we did have those, the chili cook-off and the, oh yeah, you know, um, you know the, also the, uh, you know, the, the ethnic and heritage days. I mean, that, that was always the fun stuff. So when I think about, though, I mean, you had shared several you know, things about how you're going to do things different than mm -hmm. this year. You talked about your intent you know, to be able to carry it throughout the entire year. Um, I have to think about things that, that have and have had the most impact and effect. Mm -hmm. So what are the things that kind of stand out and are just really, you know, hit that mark and it was beneficial and impactful? Is there something that kind of stands out to you that you can share? You know, for this year, I, I think you, you and I both realize that we're, this is a grand experiment in a lot of ways. We're trying, we're, we're feeling our way through in something that while we had, we had game played this, we had disaster recovery planned this, we never expected this. I mean, you know, my disaster recovery plans were what happens if we have a fire in the call center and we don't have a building for a week, not six months or not ever again. I mean, you know, and so, and, and one of the things that I'm noticing, and this is really what we've got to focus on, one of the things that we're, we're losing a touch of is that interpersonal 
communication. We all had the people that we talked to every day when we went into the office. We, you know, you, you, would, you would see them at the water cooler, you would see them at the coffee pot, or you would stop at their desk and you would chat with them. And we're not, we don't get that same interaction. Unfortunately, most of the interactions we get are, I'm having trouble, how can you help me? And so, We've got to figure out how to socialize this so that we feel part of a community. And that's really the key that I'm trying to build. So things like, you know, we can have a trivia contest and call out a person, you know, who won the trivia contest, but we've got to have a little bit of back and forth. We've got to, you know, use Teams or Skype or something to kind of have, because we've always discouraged that you know, interagent contact because it distracts from their job, but now we need it. And so those are things that we're looking to build in and change. Well, even as you mentioned that, I had a conversation the other day with somebody who was talking about the practices and the behaviors and even the skills of the frontline supervisor and how having a person who is in you know, proximity of me, who's my leader and my supervisor, is nowhere near the same. No. No, it's not. And, you know, we've explored, we're exploring some techn technology solutions that might allow that. But it, it's still, you know, you can wijack and listen, you, you can wijack and listen to an agent and, and your physical presence helps that agent understand that you're there for them. It's much different if you're monitoring a call from across town and even if the agent knows you're monitoring that call, it feels less immediate. And so those, yeah, they, I mean, like I said, I've looked at some technology options that, you know, create almost a Zoom style work environment where you can see all the people in your group and, you know, the supervisor can interact with them one on one. And, and those are going to be interesting potentials. Um, but one of the things, it's interesting, one of the things that we have not had a problem with that a number of companies have struggled with is virtual training. And I don't really know, I suspect that the reason is that our, the trainer that we had in the call center was working on a national level and she was training people remotely for some of the new software that we were bringing in for the company. And so she had about a year of experience doing that with people that she wasn't sitting in front of. And she's managed to transition that very well. Our, our, our agents are coming on the floor uh, ready to go, even though they've never actually sat on the floor um, and they've never even seen the floor. I mean, you know, and, and I really think that, you know, this will be things that we're, these are going to be skills we're going to develop as this as this comes up. I mean, I know that there are are companies that have run virtual call centers for years and years, you know, or a lot of at home agents. And there's always that question, you know, how do you keep them engaged? How do you keep them working forward? Now we're all finding it out. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's going to be. It, some will be technology, I firmly believe, but it's going to have, we're going to have to leverage our interpersonal skills and, you know, have chats with agents one-on-one. -on -one. You pick up the phone and call them. I, you know, I'll pick up the phone and call an agent when they're having an issue rather than just try and troubleshoot through it because it's much more immediate. And, you know, I can say to them while I'm on the phone, how are you holding up? How are you doing? Because not everybody reacts the same way. You know, some people are, are struggling with childcare. Some people are struggling of having, you know, their entire family home and, you know, both parents are trying to telecommute work and the kids are streaming Netflix and, you know, how do you handle the bandwidth issues? And so, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the mental aspect and the mental health aspect of it is something I think is really going to come into play that we're really going to have to address differently than we ever did before. This isn't an HR needs to be involved thing. This is everybody needs to be concerned about how everybody else is doing. Yeah. You know, how are you holding up? Uh, you know, cause you don't see anybody during the day. You know, it's, it's, I find when I, I have somebody, you know, come over to do some work on the house, we chat, you know, because neither of us get that when we're not, you know, when we're working now. So 
Well, I think you bring up a, a very interesting point that we like to explore, and that is when we start thinking about having to, you know, you and I talked about pivot, right? We mm -hmm. have things a little bit differently. A, a lot of times you'll, you'll get a hold of something and it ends up being a myth or a misconception. Yep. You know, and it, it's been blown up and it has hype and it has some glamour to it or something like that. I mean, is there something that kind of stands out to you that you believe is kind of myth and mystery and maybe should be avoided in regards to, you know, improving and delivering an exceptional customer experience? I, actually, yes. You know, one of the biggest myths was that you can't really deliver a good customer experience with at-home agents, you know, you re because you don't have the community. I, I don't believe that's true. I believe that you absolutely can. Now, have things changed? I mean, almost, I don't know if you've noticed this, but one of the first casualties of COVID was customer service for a lot of companies. Um, you know, we're all living with higher average handle times. We're all living with higher average wait times. And, you know, some of that is because we didn't know where we were going. I mean, you know, Empire is a company that we send an at-home uh, uh, salesman to come into your house, measure your floors, sell you the carpet, and then we send an install team out. Some people didn't want to do that anymore. Um, you know, some states didn't allow us to do that anymore. So what was going to happen, to, you know, to our calls? Were we going to have the same number? There was some displacement. Um, but surprisingly, the calls didn't slow down as much as we thought. We came up with interesting things like virtual sales presentations, where, you know, we, we instruct the customer how to measure their house, what to look for in their carpet. And then we show them, you know, the samples we put. We, we had just experimented with a really cool tool on our website where you can upload a photo of your room and change the flooring to any of our products. So if you want to see what it looks like with hardwood, uh, you can see what it looks like with hardwood. You want to see what it looks like with linoleum vinyl tile, you just click that and it'll show you. And that was a, a tremendous tool for our salespeople when they had to work virtually. Now, I think we'll go back to in-home agents, but I also see a way to use those tools to start the conversation with customers. And, you know, we will be bringing in, uh, you know, tools like uh, digital tools. Uh, and I'm not talking about replacing agents. I'm talking about adding assistance to the agent. One of the tools we brought in was called Balto. And we brought this in a few years ago. Very uh, young startup company. Balto is a voice analytics tool that transcribes the call in real time and then coaches the agent during the call. Because I firmly believe where AI, this, this, this whole AI outgrowth is going to be truly valuable is not in replacing agents, but in taking the agents that we have and making them more than a sum of two parts. So, you know, your agents don't know everything about flooring, but the AI can know everything about flooring. The agents have empathy. AI has no empathy. It never, you know, it's going to be decades, if ever, before AI has true empathy. And, you, you know, when you call a, a call center and you've got a problem, you want somebody that says, I am really sorry. I understand where, you, where you're coming from. AI fakes that, but it doesn't, it doesn't make it real. But the agent will make it real. The agent gives it immediacy. And then if you give the agent partner with the AI so they have the tools to actually answer the question, help the customer, then that's going to make them more powerful. And so I, I think this is, it's funny, um, I, I heard a, a, a survey question where they said, what, what's the biggest driver of, of digital transformation in your organization? The C-level, the, the call center, COVID. COVID, we've all looked at these ideas and said, these would be really cool. Now COVID's giving us this reason to say, yeah, we better do this because we want our agents to be able to handle it so they don't get, you know, because you can't turn to your, your supervisor and say, you know, this guy's being very difficult. I, I need an answer to this. We have to be able to, to be there in the moment in some other way for them. Okay, so with that being said, and you're talking about this change and the pivoting and things that we've explored and now things that we have to do, um, 
I start thinking about, you know, the, the customer experience as a whole. And do you think um, that there's a piece of advice that you would give in regards to delivering the customer experience today that you wouldn't maybe have given any year ago? What would it be? That's an interesting question because I don't think, I don't think people have changed that much. So everything that, we do we did before for customer experience we still can do now we just need to make sure that we're following the same procedures we need to make sure that they're working we need to make sure that the ivr flows we need to make sure that it, the right calls are going to the right agent and now more than ever that's critical because it's a lot harder now to you know kind of buck up the team and say, yeah, don't worry about it. We'll fix it. You know, we've, we've got to be a, a little stronger um, about reviewing our processes, reviewing everything that we do to make sure that it's still relevant and it's still delivering because there are things that we had to do in the call center. Um, probably the best thing I know one of the things that the agents probably love the most is that we no longer harp on, um, uh, you know, business attire or what you're wearing, you know, and it, because they don't, nobody sees them. So nobody cares and it really doesn't matter. Um, so that's a, uh, uh, you know, you kind of have to review your processes and procedures and say, do they still make sense? I mean, does it matter that I tell you you have, you can't have your shoulders showing or you have to wear a collared shirt? You know, I mean, if you're doing a video conference, you should be business presentable, but if you're not, I don't care. I mean, you know, it, it, it's one of those things. So, so certain things have to be reviewed for the current reality and not just taken for granted. I think that's really the most important thing I could say. Okay. So let's look at that from a customer experience perspective. And then, so you used to maybe have something that you said, well, this is true about the customer experience. Has that been turned on its head for you? Is there something that stands out? Um, I think the the thing that probably stands out the most is, you know, we've really got to, customers right now are being very, very uh, kind and considerate. Um, they understand that we're all in the same boat, but there's a limit to that. And so, you know, at some point in time, we're going to have to very quickly make sure, and I, I firmly believe as we go into the fall, I mean, we were finding our way for the first three months of this. You know, now we're starting to see what's working, what's not working, and and bringing it all together. Um, and we've got to get things like you know uh, average wait time down. Now we've put things in place that the help the customer. So rather than make you wait on hold, I offer you virtual hold. You can press one. We'll call you back as when when your time comes. That's a great tool to have but it doesn't absolve us of the need to uh, respond rapidly to the customer so you know we can use that as a tool and it helps and it, it takes the weight out they don't have to listen to our hold music which can get you know monotonous after a time but by the same token that doesn't absolve us of the need to be responsive to their needs when when they call we have to you know, do better. Um, one of the biggest things, a lot of uh, our calls are in supporting the salesman, taking payments and things like that. And we will be transitioning away from having to do that actually in the call center. First of all, it's a security issue. So you want to avoid that. But second of all, if we can automate that so that those guys don't have to wait, now they're not waiting. And if they're not waiting, they're not making their customer wait while they're trying to get a payment process through us. And at the same time, our customers aren't waiting because those are important calls we got to get through and somebody who has a lesser issue might have to wait. So you, it's, that is definitely the area I think that, you know, coming out of this, we're going to focus most on and that'll start, you know, it will start. I don't want to say that it will happen organically because we'll have to drive it. But the truth of the matter is, as everybody adjusts, it will get much better very quickly. Okay, well, as, you, as, you're, so as you're talking, there's a couple things with that. Um, I think there's going to, like, like, so field service, um, internal support, you know, how the custom, uh, customer in the contact center is, is um, you know, working within that. 
the, the cross functional. I mean, you talked about so many different things that have changed or are going to change. Yeah. But ultimately, what you said right there is that right now we have a little bit of grace period. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there, there is a certain amount of that, and because everybody, nobody knows what's going to happen. Um, just look at trying to figure out schools opening this year. Nobody knows. I mean, they've been going back and forth now for months. Are we? They were going to open on August 1st, and they decided they didn't want to open on August 1st. And, and now they're talking about being all online. So people are right now accustomed to uncertainty, and there's a certain amount of I think grace period is probably the best thing, the best way to describe it, because we're so un con uh, conditioned to this uncertainty, we can use that to our advantage to improve things for when that's going to stop. Because at some point, as you know, as well as I do, I'm starting to get a little tired of this. I mean, <laughs> we're not living right now. We're simply existing. We, we have to start living again. And, you know, people have dealt with things like this all throughout history. We're going to have to do the same thing. I mean, we can't all, it, 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 there's, a, there's a meme out there right now, and, and it's kind of poking fun at all this, and it's if we all stay inside, nobody will ever die again. That's not true. And, I mean, you know, the problem is all the things that go on around us are still happening. Right. And eventually, we're going to have to take control of it again. We, we've got to stop letting events control us, and eventually, we're going to have to take control. Yeah, and I love that you ended with that note, because the reality is, is that in a contact center, we often find ourselves being very reactive, and, and now is not the time to do that, because we do have a very limited grace period. Um, maybe, yes. maybe it's to the end of this year. Maybe it's through customer service week. Maybe, that, But the fact is, it will end, and we definitely need to get things together. So, yeah. so Man, thanks. I had a great time with you today. Can you please I did too. all the CX Igniters, how they can get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, look up Philip Bennett and you'll see my rather varied and storied career there. Um, but you can also reach out to me. Uh, my email address is pbennett at empire-today.com. And I'm happy to answer questions from anybody. I'm, I'm always looking to uh, network and connect with people. That's how I learn to do what I do, um, by, by learning from others. And I'm happy to share what I know for what it's worth, because I don't know necessarily. The, I, I said to somebody, we were doing a, a panel session. I said, not only do I not have all the answers, I don't even believe I have all the questions. So, you know, ask the questions and we'll, we'll search for the answers together. Uh, Philip Bennett, thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom. And make sure that you go to iTunes and you rate and review and hopefully subscribe to this podcast so you can get even more insights like Phil shared with us today. And go to customerserviceweekly.org and make sure you do the same. Phil Bennett, we wish you the very best. Thanks, Jim. I really appreciate it. This has been great. Thank you for listening to the Customer Service Weekly podcast. Please rate, review, subscribe, follow, and share the Customer Service Weekly podcast and register for a free membership at customerserviceweekly.org to get the latest updates on how you can help ignite the CX spirit everywhere.